the least developed countries have been battered by a succession of international crises, like the high levels of the international prices of food, of energy, rising international interest rates, which are raising the costs of their external debt. Hello, this is the Weekly Tradecast, a podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Toms. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. This week, just ahead of the UN's fifth conference on the least developed countries, we're talking about why these 46 nations need urgent help to address inequalities, attract investment and deliver on the sustainable development goals. The world's least developed countries, or LDCs as they're known, are home to more than 1 billion people. They account for just 1% of global carbon dioxide emissions, but bear the brunt of climate change with more destructive storms, floods and heat waves. LDCs are also being hit hard by shortages, soaring food and energy prices and crippling debt that imperil their economic development. That presents them with a stark choice between adapting to climate change and exploiting their natural resources. We're here to talk about why it's vital for least developed countries to achieve those sustainable development goals and how they can get there is Rolf Traeger, chief of UNCTAD's least developed countries section. An economist, he has focused on helping the world's most vulnerable and least resilient nations for the last 17 years. Teaching and training are personal passions, even outside work. But Rolf also enjoys hiking and practicing yoga. Well, welcome here today, Rolf. Let's start with the five-day UN conference on least developed countries. Why is this so important right now? Well, this uh, conference is important because last year the world community, so all countries of the world, adopted a new program of action for the least developed countries. It's the so-called Doha program of action in which a series of development objectives uh, were agreed. So uh, the issue of this uh, conference is how to help uh, the LDCs achieve those goals uh, and uh, objectives. So it's all about giving concrete content to this plan to see how the different actors, different countries, but also the private sector, the youth, parliament, etc., can actually assist uh, the least developed countries implement uh, these goals uh, and reach uh, the uh, development uh, objectives. Now, why are these sustainable development goals so important to the least developed countries? I mean, they have a lot of other considerations at the moment, especially after the Ukraine war and the cost of living crisis, COVID. Yes, you're right uh, in the sense that uh, the least developed countries, they have in uh, recent years been battered by a succession of international crises, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which basically set uh, the uh, development process back several years. On top of it, they have been hit by more recent crises, like the high levels of the international prices of food, of energy, rising international interest rates, which are raising the costs of their external debt. They have been very hard to hit by new crises, new external shocks. So that's why it's so important that the international community reaffirms its commitments to helping uh, the least developed countries get out of this situation of fragility, of vulnerability, and build their resilience to future shock. So I imagine that will be topping the agenda. What do you see as the main challenges to overcome? So the issue is how to prepare them, how to help them build their productive capacities in order to strengthen uh, their institutions, to plan ahead at their development so that they can grow stronger economies, stronger institutions, which are better prepared to weather the challenges and difficulties which will inevitably come from their international environment. On their own, 
they have to reach very clarity of where they want to go because you have these overarching objectives which are given by the sustainable development goals on one side but also the development objectives of the Doha Program of Action. The goals all the way from small island developing states of 15,000 inhabitants to big countries which have more than 100 million inhabitants. So what they need to do is to translate these overall international goals into their own national priorities according to their own national circumstances, economic, geographic, climatic, etc., and decide where are they going to put their priorities, which sectors of economic activity are they going to develop according to their own capabilities, to their own potential, and there mobilize the means to reach this. And here is where they need the support of the international community. So what are the international trade conditions? the financing uh, conditions, the technology which can be transferred to these countries, but also how these uh, so-called development partners can help them reinforce and strengthen their own institutions, but also, and crucially, the private sector of the LDCs themselves, i.e. the enterprise environment of domestic companies. The international community developed countries, but also developing countries which are at higher levels of development, international organization, NGOs, etc. All of these external actors, they have a role to play, but it's up to the national states, to national governments to coordinate, to set up priorities. We talked about why it's so important for least developed countries to reach their sustainable goals, but they do have other pressing priorities like feeding people and building schools. What will achieving these sustainable development goals actually mean to people? Well, you have to think that the sustainable development goals, as well as the goals of the Doha Program of Action, they are extremely vast. They touch the different uh, domains of sustainable development, be it economic, social, environmental. So issues like uh, building school, uh, eradicating hunger, eradicating poverty, they are part of the sustainable development goals and of the objectives of the Doha Program of Action. Now, the question is how to reach this. Well, the only sustainable way of eradicating poverty, of eliminating hunger, of getting better living conditions to the population of the least developed countries, as you rightly put, it's more than one billion people, is to give them uh, good and decent jobs. It's by developing productive capacities, by developing the enterprise sector to generate these jobs, uh, that this enterprise sector has to operate with increasingly more modern and more performant technology so that productivity rises, also earnings and salaries rises. But also you have all of the needs of investing in infrastructure so that uh, there are better roads, better provision of energy, better transport systems, better communication systems, better housing. All of this uh, has to be seen uh, as a whole and uh, not just pursuing uh, one particular goal uh, like hunger of education. You need to have a broader picture. Is it fair to say then that it's not really a balance or a choice between a green and more sustainable future and the need to exploit their resources then, that they go hand in hand? Yes, they go hand in hand over the medium term. In the short term, there are inevitable choices. So for instance, are you going to exploit a mine or are you going to preserve it as an area of wild nature preservation? But uh, the point is that once the metal is extracted, these natural resources are gone. So to make sure 
that while you are exploiting these natural resources, you are using the proceeds of this exploitation to build the new assets, uh, new infrastructure. So the important thing is that, yes, there are inevitably trade-offs, uh, but it's uh, never to be fixated on the short-term gains but also to put everything in a perspective of the, the medium to long term, that you do exploit your natural resources while making sure that you are setting the basis for future development. In order to mobilize finance, in order to enhance uh, technology transfer and to build institutions of LDCs, uh, they needed the very strong and decisive backing of their uh, international development partners. Okay, and well, that's quite a challenge we have there. Thank you to UNCTAD's Rolf Traeger for being this week's guest. Tune into the weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. There's even more on our website, unctad.org. I'm Sarah Toms in Geneva. Goodbye for now.